G'day and welcome to another episode of Ian Smithson's Photography. So this is challenge number 16, verticals. And I've driven up a four wheel drive track called Big Hill Track. It's a very simple shot, but I decided to come out here and do it because rather than just shooting an, any other part of a forest where you've got lots of verticals, I wanted to break the verticals up a little bit by having this S-shaped road running through the middle of it to add a point of interest but also because there are a couple of trees here that are not quite vertical and that just adds another little bit of interest. So very simple shot. The challenge I'm having is that I'm shooting almost straight into the sun. The sun is just above the tree line at the moment. It's sort of mid afternoon at the moment. So the sun isn't too low that I'm shooting directly into it through the lens, but the scene is heavily backlit and it's a fairly overcast day with a grey sky behind the trees in the forest so I'm going to have to bracket. I'm shooting this from three stops under to one stop over so a five shot four stop bracket and I'm going to take a few shots to work out the right depth of field but I think at about f11 should work so let's see what we can do. So I have the camera set up here with, sorry, I'll just turn it on so I can see through live view. Pentax K1 with the Pentax 24 to 70 millimeter. I'm on about 40 millimeters, which just gives me a nice framing. And the sun's just peeking through, giving me some nice dappled sunlight on the track here. So I'm just gonna fire off some shots here and see what they look like. Now there's just this nice little bit of misty rain which has come back, which explains why I'm wearing the hat. I don't really need it for sunscreen, uh, but age-old glasses, uh, it keeps the, uh, the rain off my glasses. And the sun's just about to disappear behind a cloud, so I'm going to keep taking shots here and see what I come up with. I'm then going to move further down the road and see if I can come up with some slightly different com compositions. Uh, but before I do that, I don't want to just take one shot here. I want to vary the scene, take some verticals, horizontals, zoom in, zoom out a bit, move my viewpoint around um, so that I can get some different angles to shoot at. So I'll take this one here and then I'll get back to you soon. So that's looking pretty good. I've narrowed in a little bit more, probably to about 55 millimetres now, just to cut the sun out completely. And I've still reframed the shot though to make sure that I keep the track coming out of the bottom left corner of the frame and trailing its way across to the right and then up into the background. I don't want the track to be broken into the side of the shot or to come out of the middle of the frame. I want to lead it from the left hand corner um, up towards the centre and the right hand side. So one last pair of shots here, a vertical and then a horizontal because I really like the looking straight into the sun.
there. Just reframe the horizontal to get that sun slightly off centre. And this shadow coming from the big tree in the middle down to the right hand corner. I really like the contrast in that and I think it's going to make a nice black and white. But time will tell when we get it back into the computer. So that's it from here. I'm going to move on up the road and see if I can find some more verticals to shoot. Oh, and one last little trick, when you're shooting straight into the sun and you get a lot of flare, even shooting at a really narrow aperture, which gives me that starburst effect, is going to give me a lot of flare. Um, I'm not using any filters at the moment, so that's a bit less of a problem. Uh, but one of the tricks you can do, if I just switch to video here, and show you how much flare I'm getting straight through the lens, is to take a set of shots straight as you see it then but then to put a finger down or two fingers down directly over the sun and you'll notice here on the video how all that glare goes away and then you can blend that back in later so i'm going to give that a go again it's important to set this onto manual exposure though because me blocking out that bright sun is going to change the exposure significantly if I've got that set to automatic. Quick review of those. Looks like the starburst is really good but there are some spots in the lens in addition to that flare and those spots indicate to me that there's crap on the lens. It's probably raindrops. So, always worth giving your lens a wipe. I always carry one of these. I find the towels a little bit better than lens cloths because the lens cloths are so thin they don't absorb a lot of water. They end up just spreading it around. So this little microfiber towel works really well. And give that another go with the fingers down over the front. So that's the first shot. And now put fingers down over the sun. And we'll see what that comes up like. So I've found another place further down the track with this pair of really nice tree trunks, one of which has got the inner part of the base burnt out. And I'm going to take a shot here to start with, just with that tree and the tree immediately behind it, and then a series of vertical trees down the road that are just diminishing away, getting smaller and smaller as you move further away.
Okay, I found one last shot. This really beautiful spot here, and I'll show you a pan of it with 20 or 30 vertical trunks of different sizes, some burnt, some not burnt, some with peeling bark, some new, some old, and lovely green shrubbery in the understory in the foreground. And I'm going to take a panorama shot here. Um, first of all, I'll take one shot wide angle and see if it works cropped. Uh, but I'll also try and take a panorama uh, using a vertical format and take multiple shots and try and stitch those together. The reason to do that rather than just taking a wide angle is that it gives you a much larger image file to work with because you're stitching together five, six, seven, eight different images rather than just taking the one and cropping some of that out. The reason that you might not do that every time is sometimes it's really difficult to stitch shots together because you've got things moving, uh, you've got changing lighting conditions, all of those sort of things. But the lighting is pretty flat now. It's late in the evening. It's about one hour away from sunset. We're not going to get a visible sunset. The sun's just going to drop down behind the clouds and the mountain range in the background here. Um, so the light's quite good. There's a bit of wind, um, but I'm not shooting the treetops, I'm just going to shoot trunks. I just want a wide horizontal panorama with a lot of different vertical tree trunks in them. Thank you. 